Hello everyone and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions hydrology education videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at bioretention facilities, how the soil layers interact with each other to produce the results of filtering the water, detaining the stormwater. We're going to go over all of that here in this video. We have so many more hydrology education videos on our channel. If you're interested in any other topics related to modeling, stormwater designs, I would check out our YouTube channel there. So surface water will infiltrate into the soil layers in the bioretention facility. So we have a diagram here on the left, and this will filter the water before exiting through the outlet or infiltrating into the native soil. So when we describe a bioretention facility, it has a couple of main goals. Basically, we're trying to infiltrate uh, stormwater from the surface, have it go through and filter through these soil layers so that it actually gets cleaned and then it gets tamed and it can then infiltrate into that native soil layer or eventually outflow through some sort of an under drain. So this is a LID or low impact design and the goal is to on site through some sort of natural means uh, actually filter our stormwater out and remove pollutants. So natural soil composition does an excellent job of filtering stormwater. So Many people don't understand this, but actually the natural soil in the ground and sometimes engineered soil mixes, they actually do a really good job of filtering out and removing uh, pollutant particles. And so this is why infiltration is always a preferable stormwater operation due to soil particles ability to pull pollutants from the water. When it, whether it comes to pollutants that are coming from off road or um, you know, point source pollution sources, natural soil can actually do a really good job. Of course, if it gets overwhelmed and there's too much pollution then that's going to be a problem, but in a sort of natural environment sense, these soil layers actually do a really good job of pulling the pollutants from the soil. So bioretention works by retaining water on site, which then allows the water to either infiltrate into the bioretention engineered soil mix, evaporate and transpire into the atmosphere, and outflow further downstream. So those are kind of the three options for where the water is going to end up going. So when explaining bioretention, bioretention can provide water quality and hydro modification benefits if designed correctly. So we need to design these facilities properly, but it can give those two benefits if we're able to do that. Bioretention is an effective LID solution and can be used in a variety of situations. And the Washington State specifies in WWH in 2012 is to be used to model bioretention. So we're going to be using that model if we're going to model bioretention. However, Many people use LID solutions across the country. This is what is being utilized in Western Washington. So the bioretention facility uses a variety of soil layers to filter stormwater. The arrangement of the soil layers in depth will greatly determine the filtration's effectiveness. So how effective we're gonna be able to infiltrate the water, retain it, detain it, mitigate, is gonna be based on the depth and type of those soil layers. But in a bioretention facility, specifically in Western Washington, we have combinations of sand, gravel, there's a custom soil mix that is utilized here in Western Washington, and ASTM soils to filter out that uh, water. In WWHM 2012, the process looks like this. We insert a land use area basin and input the pre-developed land use for the project, whatever that may be. Maybe it's three acres of till forest. We then use a bioretention element in the mitigated scenario. We update the land use area for the mitigated scenario with converted land use area. Say that you're converting quite a bit of the area into impervious area. That would be um, emblematic of the mitigated scenario. And then we connect the bioretention element to the point of compliance. What we're going to do is actually add a third layer, a third soil layer of one foot. So we have a total of four feet of soil layers in this bioretention facility. And what's great about WWHM 2012 then is we can use the auto sizing feature to size the facility to meet that 91% filtered water quality standard, which is what the standard here is in Western Washington. So you can see that this element can be fully modeled in something like WWHM 2012 and actually go through and emulate or use an algorithm to program how the water is going to interact within the soil layers in a very complicated fashion, which I'll go over here. So finally, the facility size is uh, what we see on the left after running the auto sizing algorithm. And then note that that water quality percent filtered is 91.49%, which would pass for this project. So how does it actually function? Well, like I said, there's four main functions for bioretention facilities. We have storage, so it allows for the storage of runoff in the facility for a short period of time until it's going to drain down uh, or infiltrate. This filtration, so runoff, is filtered through the soil layers to remove pollutants and allow for proper reintroduction of water back into that natural environment. Then there's infiltration, so stormwater can then infiltrate into the native soil after uh, filtration. If the soil is type C or tilled, then the water will probably exit through some form of an underdrain. And then mitigation, so bioretention can actually mitigate the stormwater with a proper outlet structure. 
So let's talk about the equations at play here. So there's several equations used to determine water movement from the surface of the biotension facility through the various soil layers and into an underdrain or native infiltration. The water movement process can be divided into three separate zones. So the surface ponding and infiltration into the top soil layer, then there's percolation through the different subsurface layers, and then underdrain flow and native infiltration is going to be the last divisional layer here. The key equations used to determine the depth, filtration, and movement between these soil layers are combinations of the modified green amped, Van Gen Newton equations, and Darcy's law. So these equations, along with gravity head and upward bubbling pressure for pore space, combine to make a model and emulate this water movement in this facility. These equation values are solved for and calculated every 15 minute time step. And by solving these equations, we can determine moisture movement between the different bioretention soil layers. So we're modeling that entire process, combining these equations, which is quite, uh, quite mind blowing. So the calculations are using those three equations, which I have here, Darcy's law, you can see the Van Gen equation for relative hydraulic conductivity. So you can see these are not like simple equations. These are not, you know, X solve for Y are very simple equations. These are very complicated equations combined. And so many people have tried to emulate the bioretention algorithm process in a spreadsheet. It can't be done. <laughs> it's a very complicated algorithm here showing the complexity of this facility. So the use of bioretention for community sustainability can be used for LID. So bioretention is considered to be a low impact design and properly integrates into the natural environment. And it's looking to be used in things like green cities. Bioretention facilities are considered to be a major part of multiple green city initiatives and bioretention integrates with other LID facilities in a holistic manner. So it's part of an entire, can be a part of an entire city or community plan when looking at green city designs. So we actually have a free guide on modeling bioretention facilities. You can find that guide for free in the description down below if you want to learn more. But that is a quick overview of bioretention facilities. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. But anyways, we will see you guys next time.